Welcome to another Pretzel.Rocks help guide. Today, how to set up a Stream Deck to work with your Pretzel player. Let's dive on in. You just got a cool new Stream Deck from our friends over at Elgato and you wanna be able to control your Pretzel player. Awesome. These quick, easy steps will walk you through exactly how to get your Pretzel player to cleanly and efficiently play through your Stream Deck. You're gonna start by opening up your Stream Deck app, which allows you to control and add buttons directly into your Stream Deck. Some great guides are located on the Elgato website that can show you how to initially set up and initiate your Stream Deck. We're gonna go ahead and click this multicolored icon at the top, which will take us to the Stream Deck store. Currently, Pretzel.Rocks is sitting right here on the homepage, which makes it very easy for you to click and download. In the event that we've been moved, just simply type in Pretzel. It will bring up the Pretzel.Rocks player and you can click install here. For any reason you want to read the additional details, like some help guides and other information, you can locate that by just simply going in there. Once you have the app installed, you can go ahead and close that store since we're not going to need it anymore. And you're then going to want to open your Pretzel desktop app. This cannot be the web player plugin due to the fact that we require special tools that are only available in the desktop player in order for it to correctly connect to the Stream Deck plugin. At this time, we only allow Twitch logins to be used within our main desktop player. In order to use the G Suite, you'll have to wait a little bit longer while we're awaiting final approval. Once we have this up and running, you can go ahead and just close it down and leave it in the background as we're gonna be playing with this main app here throughout the most setup. What we wanna do here is we're gonna to wanna to go ahead and start by looking for the pretzel.rocks plug here. Go ahead and click on that. And we're gonna add some really cool tools here from the side to help adjust and control our player. The first and foremost one will be our play pause button, which I'm gonna drop right here in the top center. We have three different actions that you can choose from in here. Toggle, play, and pause. If you want dedicated keys, one to play and another dedicated key to pause, you can go ahead and pick each individual one. Personally, because there's not a lot of space here, I like to put them both into the same button where toggling allows you to go between play and pause. Below that, you'll see our track timer. This allows you to count down till the end of the song or count up as the song starts to play. Again, a personal preference, I prefer to count down. Counting down allows me to go ahead and get a good idea of how many seconds are left in the song, just in case I've noticed I'm running into a little bit of dead air at the end. Speaking of dead air, let's say that we're not liking that song that comes in there. We can go ahead and drag over next track. Quite self-explanatory. It literally lets you jump to the next track. You can title it anything you want. Personally, I like to call it next. Maybe that song jumped a little early and you weren't quite ready for it and you want to restart that song. We have a really cool backup or replay button. At this time, we do not have a previous song option. We're hoping to have that down the road, but for the meantime, it'll just be that simple replay button. Let's get some volume control on here. So we're gonna go ahead and drag open our mute player. Maybe you're gonna do a close up, or you're jumping over to ask chat, or you wanna take a second and really just let the chat soak in that voice or a moment. This allows you to just simply mute the player. It'll still play in the background, but it'll kill that audio for you. Really cool feature is when you click on that, it will actually highlight with a pink icon and the button will light up to let you know that your music has been muted. We're gonna go ahead and add two additional buttons, volume up and volume down. You're gonna notice the difference between the little icons, pretty universal symbol for volume up and volume down. When you click on either one, you can name it but if you do name that icon, it will remove your ability to actually see the percentage of volume you currently have activated. I like to leave those blank. So that way I can just see, oh, I'm at 15% volume. And down here, you can adjust how many percentage points you want it to go up or down, depending on each button press. Again, personal preference, I love to be right around 10%. Makes it quick and easy to jump up my volume. You can go as low as one or as high as 99 if you wish. All right, how about some liking and disliking tracks? So there's a song that I just absolutely love and I wanna be able to find it later. And I wanna be able to like see it after my stream and maybe toss it somewhere or just save it for another day. So I've got that really cool love button. Vice versa, abhorrent song, absolutely hate it. I don't ever really wanna hear it or see it again. I've got that cool hate button, I can just click on it and that song gets put down into my thumbs down category that I never have to touch again. Maybe we're gonna be making some VODs and that we're planning on putting on to YouTube later for a highlight reel, which I highly recommend everybody does for exposure, especially if you're streaming on Twitch. 
And we want to set it up so that those tracks will be YouTube safe later. I'll drag this cool little icon out here. And now if I press it, when my next song kicks on, it's going to automatically be YouTube safe. And vice versa, I can take it off. The cool part is this does it for any of our three features that we offer when it comes to adjusting those different filters. So we also have one here for our instrumental only and another one here just for mature content. Currently, I have mature on, YouTube safe off and instrumental off, which is going to open up the most options for playing music that I want. Now I'm working on building a playlist. And I want to try to slowly build out a really cool intro playlist that I play every time. So I'm going to drag out this add to playlist option. Call it intro. Nice and easy. But I got to know what playlist I'm going to put these into. I have startup music, lost arc, and stream deck. Let's say I want to make a new one. I want to just call it, I don't know. Let's call it intro. So let me click type intro down here. We're going to click that plus sign. Okay, now we've added this uncertainty heavy and cane beat song to our our intro playlist. And if we go back in here, we're going to be like, oh, no, our playlist isn't here. What do we do? I personally just delete it. Go back in here, drag add to playlist one more time. And now that playlist has shown up. Intro is right there. Pretty cool. We have two options here. The playlist icon, which is this one currently right here with the three lines, or you can do now playing and now playing shows you the current album art for the song that is currently playing in the player. When you hit confirm, it upgrades and uploads it and shows you whichever one is currently playing. So if I hit the next song, you'll see that that track changes. I personally for add to playlist like that simple playlist option. That way I know which one is the add to playlist. And it's quick and easy for me to find. That'll make more sense when I show these parts here. Now I want to get ready to go live and I'm ready to have the entire world hear my amazing playlist that I've built. Title this bad boy intro. And I'm going to look for my playlist. There it is that intro playlist. I'm going to hit confirm. Now I've got that album art that automatically shows up. And another cool thing, if I remove my title, it will show whatever title that playlist currently is in my player. Let's go ahead and click that button and see what happens here. So we've got it playing for us. Some nice music in the background. And we're getting ready to go live. Maybe you're a person that prefers just to play a specific station versus playing that actual custom made. We're going to drag over station. We're going to see all of the stations that are within the player. And we're going to pick one that we really like. So we're going to go with lo-fi here. And once I hit confirm on lo-fi and hit confirm, it's going to show that same album art that you're going to find inside of the pretzel player. Last but not least, you don't have that desktop app. How do I download that? Where do I get it? Great question. You're going to head on over to our pretzel.rocks website and just scroll all the way on down to the very bottom of the page. There'll be two options down there. Download the desktop app in both Windows and Mac. And I can't stress enough our Discord community full of volunteers, helpers and staff that are there to help you make your streaming experience as successful as possible. They're there waiting, standing by and hoping they can help you in any way. It's completely free and it's a great community to learn a ton. As always, we thank you for stopping by and learning a little bit more about the Stream Deck plugin. As always, reach out to our team with any questions at hello at pretzel.rocks or drop by our Discord. Have a great day.